accomplish injustice. And one of the main objectives, one of the main missions of the prophets, of the revelations, was to establish justice. The true peace can come from Allah alone. And if you worship only Allah, then only the true peace can come from Him. He is the source of true peace. He is the source. Now we will have approximately 25 minutes for question and answers with the speaker. The format for the question and answer session is that we will have three mics. We have one here at the front, one over here in the middle, and then one for the ladies in the back. So we will begin with this mic and then rotate in this fashion. As always, we give a preference for questions to non-Muslims. So if any non-Muslims do wish to ask a question, please do let one of the volunteers know and we will allow you to ask your question first. Please make sure that all of your questions are on the topic at hand, which is justice, a prerequisite for peace. Keep your questions brief and short, and please make sure that your questions are stated clearly. And lastly, before you ask your question, do also state your name and your profession. So if you would like to ask a question, please come to the mics now, and we can begin the questions for the speaker, Atar Khan. If anybody does have a question, come to the mic. Okay, we'll begin with the second mic for the men. Uh, this is Sailesh Chandurban Thadani from Mumbai, King Circle, and uh, uh, belonging to Maharashtra Congress. I believe that uh, justice doesn't come uh, immediately, or maybe only if God, we cannot depend upon people. Some people get justice immediately, some people, it takes five years, 10 years, 20 years for a society to prevail. As you said, agar aapko vishwa shanti chahiye ya shanti chahiye apne state, religion, country mein, koi bhi country ho, koi bhi nagarik ho, to jab tak aapko justice, hare kom, every, every religion, if you don't have peace, uh, what's it, justice in the society, peace can never prevail. But only God can shower you with his blessings. I'm very sorry with the state of uh, confusion and chaos in every religion and the people in the high courts and supreme courts. Cases are not being taken. Many are files. I uh, understood the question. Yes. Yeah. But I suppose the question that uh, in the supreme court, in the high court, cases are pending for 25 years, for 15 years, for 30 years, and people are not getting justice. So what is the remedy for that? As I told you in my lecture, that if the people believe in the concept of God, that God exists, then this concept itself will prevent you from committing injustice because you will be held accountable on the day of judgment. One of the famous authors, William Dalimple, when he came to India, there was an article which came in the midday and he was asked the question, why there is so much terrorism in this world? Why there is so much violence in this world? What is the reason behind that? Because he was an author of a book related to that. He answered, he said, the root cause of terrorism in this world is injustice. Is injustice. Because when the injustice is committed on the people, they approach the courts. They approach the lawyers. They approach the judges. And the case is filed. And they are not getting justice. For 15 years, for 20 years, for 25 years. Some people, they commit suicide. Those who don't believe in God, because this world is the ultimate for them, they commit suicide. Some people, they retaliate. And when they retaliate in an illegal way, so terrorism, violence, it happens. So William Dalimple, he said, the root cause of terrorism today is injustice. So unless and until a person has a concept of God, if a Muslim is done injustice in this world, he may appeal to the court, he will go to the court, he will appeal there, he will file his case. And even if the justice is not given, is not delivered to him in this world, he will still be patient. He will still be patient. He will not resort to unfair means. 
he will not resort to terrorism he will not resort to violence because he knows that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to establish justice on the day of judgment and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that whatever you do in this world whatever you do an atom's weight of bad or good you will see it on the day of judgment so muslim's faith is that even if he is done injustice he will be patient inshallah because he knows if hitler incinerated 6 million jews in this world and he shot himself dead is it justice he incinerated 6 million jews as the history says and he shot himself dead is it justice what about 5 million 99999 what about them what about those people 59 lakhs 99999 what about those people and he shot himself dead allah says in surah nisa chapter number 4 verse number 56 for those who reject our signs we will soon cast them into the hellfire and as often as their skins are roasted we shall give them fresh skin so that they may feel the pain if Hitler incinerated 6 million Jews, Allah has the power to incinerate him, to burn him, to roast him 6 million or 12 million or 18 million times. So this is the power of Allah. Allah said, for those who reject our signs, we will soon cast them into the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they may feel the pain. So the concept of accountability is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters, to establish justice on this earth. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down the rules and regulations for the human beings. Everything is there. This Quran, it is a constitution. It is a constitution in itself. And when we implement on the Quran, when we implement on the Quran in this world, we can establish justice of this world, inshallah. Because Allah says, Allah says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 45, Allah says that those who do not rule by the revelation of Allah, those are the people who are zalimun. Those are the people who are committing injustice. So the constitution is with us, the rules and regulations, each and everything is with us. So it is on us to implement the rule of God because God is the owner of the whole earth. He is the owner of the whole universe. So if justice has to be established, it is through God himself. What he wants, if you do, what he commands, if you do, if you commit, then only the justice can be restored and can be established on this earth because God is the owner, he's the sole owner and we have to worship him alone and alone. I hope that answers it. If we could have the next question from the sister. Assalamu alaikum. I would like to ask you the question that if justice is a prerequisite for establishment of peace, then how can we establish peace without an Islamic government in the present world scene? Sister has posed the question, if justice is a prerequisite for peace, then how can you establish justice without an Islamic government on this earth? That's what I'm telling you, sister, and I said this in the previous answer, that Quran is the constitution. It is the constitution in itself. And all the rules, all the do's and don'ts, all what is haram, what is halal, what to do, what not to do for the human beings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the human beings. If a man, if he makes any law, he will make it according to his feeling. If a woman makes a law, then she will make it according to her feelings. And that law will be partial to men. And if a man makes a law, that will be partial to women. So who is supposed to make the law? The creator of both. The creator of both is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only he deserves to make the law for the human beings. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down the Quran. As Allah says in Surah Hadid, chapter number 57, verse number 25, Allah says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ That it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent the messengers with clear proofs. وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابِ And sent down the revelation. This revelation, wal mizan, and the balance, liyakum an nas bil qis, so that they may establish justice between the people. So we human beings, we have to establish justice through the balance, the intellect that Allah has given us, and the revelation, and how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam implemented on the Quran. 
so we have to understand the Quran as per the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So an Islamic government, if it is formed on justice, then of course we want Allah's rule on this earth. Who doesn't want this? Everybody wants Allah's rule on this earth. So to understand what is the rule of God, we have to go to the Quran. The rule of God is in the Quran, and we have to establish that. And unless and until we establish that, first we have to establish in our homes, in a society in a country and then into multiple nations or to the whole world so it starts when some good people they come up and they start implementing in their life first we have to implement Islam in our life we have to strive to reach the level of the Sahabas how they implemented how they copied or imitated the Prophet there's a share of Allama Iqbal in Urdu he said, Sabak phir par sadaqat ka, adalat ka, shujaat ka, liya jayega to se kaam dunya ki imamat ka. He said, read the lesson. He's addressing the future generation that you have to read the lesson of truthfulness, of courage, of justice, and then you have to lead the nation, you have to lead the whole world. He's addressing the future generation, the youth. What he's talking? He's referring the truthfulness of Abu Bakr. He is referring to the courage of Hazrat Ali and he is referring to the justice, the justice of Umar. May Allah be pleased with them all. He is referring to them. He said, read the lessons of these people. Read the life history of these people. How these people implement on the teaching of the Prophet How they implement it. And we have different sorts of people. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He was a different sort of person. Ali was a different sort of person. May Allah be pleased with him. Abu Bakr was a different sort of person. May Allah be pleased with him. But when they all strive to follow the Prophet wasallam, then we had Abu Bakr, the Siddiq. May Allah be pleased with him. Then we have Ali, the courageous. May Allah be pleased with him. Then we have Umar, the just. May Allah be pleased with him. So if people of this nature we have people like the nature of Hazrat Umar. They are just. We have people like them. But unless and until what happened? These people, they followed the Prophet They all strive to follow the Prophet As the Quran says in Surah Ahzab, chapter 33, verse number 21, لَقَدْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْفَةٌ حسنة. Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have the beautiful pattern of conduct. You have the best example to follow. And if we follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ, we all Muslims, if we intend to follow the example, and if we follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ, then inshallah, we'll have people like Umar, like Ali, maybe not of that level, but maybe sort of that, like Ali, like Umar, and like Abu Bakr, and like all the companions of the Prophet. And at that time, the Prophet ﷺ, he practically established justice, and it can again be reestablished as the Prophet ﷺ foretold in the Hadith. That Islam will enter each and every house and peace will prevail, inshallah. So that is the prophecy of the Prophet wasallam that Islam will enter every house and the justice will be restored, it will be reestablished. We just like to have people like the companions of the Prophet wasallam, and we just have to imitate, follow the sayings and the examples of the Prophet wasallam, and then we can establish the Islamic government and then we will establish the rule of Allah on this earth. I hope that answers the question, sister. Can I please, ask? Please state your question. One is of a non-Muslim and one is of my wife, which is Muslim, alhamdulillah. You can ask the question of uh, a non-Muslim. Uh, I am asking on behalf of Mr. Flander. He is a Christian. He, is, he belongs to Juha's witness. I am seeing him studying Bible for last at least 25 years. He says that if God or Allah prepares hellfire for us, he is unjust. How can I explain him? that his God is Allah is not in just in least bit. Please answer from Bible. Thank you. Brother has posed a question that one of the Christian brothers, he posed him a question that if Allah has created the hellfire, then he is unjust. So how can he answer to the Christian as per the Bible and as per the references from the Quran? If Allah has created the hellfire, Allah has created the paradise, one of the attributes of God is a rahman he is a rahman he is the most merciful he is the merciful god that is the attribute of god and as i mentioned in my lecture that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down 100 part of his mercy on this world 100 
one part of that mercy out of 100 he sent down to this earth and that is why we have emotional attachment with other people other human beings the love between the parents and the children the love between the husband and the wife the love that you have whatever emotional attachment that you have in this world it is because of the mercy of Allah which he sent down on this earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and there's a verse in the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if a person does a good deed he will be rewarded 10 times if a person he does a good deed he will be rewarded 10 times but if a person does a bad deed it will be counted only as one can you see the mercy of Allah you do a good deed 10 times it will be multiplied if you do it in Ramadan multiple times so this is the mercy of Allah but if you commit a bad deed then it will be only counted as one this is the mercy of Allah but he is merciful he is merciful but at the same time he is just one of the attributes of God is that he is just Allah says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 40 he says Allah is never unjust in the least degree he is never unjust in the least degree let me give you an example suppose two students appear in the examination one person he strive like anything to pass in this examination and for the whole year he did his study and he appeared for the examination and another student he was naughty he did not attend any class he did not read he did not study a single word and he also appeared for the examination now if the teacher is merciful as per the concept of the Christians if the teacher is merciful and he passes both the students is it fine I'm asking the people is it fine if the teacher passes both the students because the teacher is merciful he's merciful no 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 but teacher is merciful at the same time he is also just he cannot pass the person who did not study for the examination who did not write a single word on the paper how can the teacher pass that person as the teacher cannot pass both the students in the same way God cannot allow all the human beings to enter paradise because of his attribute of mercy because another attribute of God is that he is also just at the same time furthermore from the Bible from the Bible the Christians say they believe that Christ died for their sins Isa alayhi salam he died for the sins of the world so all the human beings if they believe that Christ died for their sins they will be saved but if you don't believe then you will be in the hellfire so in Christianity also they have a concept of hellfire if you read the book of Revelation read the book of Revelation if you read the book of Revelation Jahannam is described in the book of Revelation ask that Christian brother that if I do not believe that Christ died for my sins will I be entered into Jannah will I be with you in Jannah in paradise along with other Christians ask that Christian and he will say no he will say no because they believe that unless and until you believe that Christ died for your sins you will not be saved salvation is not yours salvation is theirs unless a person believes that Christ died for his sins and this concept of Christ dying for the sins it is mentioned in the book life of Bengal Lancer he said no heathen tribe has ever conceived so grotesque an idea that man is born with a hereditary stain upon him and that stain for which he was not personally responsible was to be atoned for and the creator of all things had to sacrifice his only begotten son to neutralize this mysterious curse he said no heathen tribe has ever conceived so grotesque an idea who says this a non-muslim in the book life of the Bengal Lancer take the example suppose a king a king he brings a robber is brought in front of him a rapist is brought in front of him and what he does he doesn't punish them he brought his own son son come here and he killed his own son to save these people is it justice this is what the concept of Christianity they believe that God sacrificed his own son for the sins of the world is it just to the son the son will say what is my fault so they have this idea 
So even in the concept, even in the belief of the Christians, the concept of hellfire is there for those who don't believe in Christ, for those who do not believe that Christ died for their sins, they will enter into the hellfire. This concept is yet there. And the Christ said, Jesus Christ will be upon him. He said in Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 7, verse number 21, 22, 23, he said, on that day, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord. On that day, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not do good things in your name? Did we not perform miracles in your name? And we know Christians, they are building hospitals, they are building orphanages, they are building schools, so many good things they are doing. So Jesus Christ said, on that day, many will come to me, on that day, saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not perform wonders in your name, miracles in your name, and we do all these good works in your name? What will Jesus do? What will he say? He will say, I don't even know you. Depart from me, ye dead work iniquity. I don't even know you. Go away from here. He won't tell the Muslims, go away from here. He won't tell the Hindus, go away from here. He won't tell the Jews to go away from here. He won't tell them. He's talking to the Christians. And he will say, I don't even know you. Depart from me. Go away from here. Why? Why? I'm asking you why? Because they're calling him Lord, Lord. They are making him another Allah, another Rabb, another sustainer, another creator in place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true God. They are committing shirk, one of the greatest injustices, the greatest injustice they are committing. That's why the, Jesus Christ will say on the day of judgment, I don't even know you, depart from me. Because they are calling him. He said, many will come to me on that day saying, Lord, Lord. You calling me Lord? And Jesus never claimed divinity in his life. And they are committing shirk. If they commit shirk, this is the greatest injustice. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you. Jazakallah khaira, brother Atar Khan. We have run out of time for the question and answers. So I'd like to give a big thank you for his very educational and inspiring talk, brother Atar Khan.